The mission of the Central Contra Costa Sanitary District is to protect the public health and the environment. Environmental Services works to keep pollutants out of the waste stream. The treatment plant cleans and disinfects wastewater before it's discharged to Sassoon Bay. The Collection System Operations Department, commonly known as CSO, well, their job is to maintain the flow, keeping the wastewater in the sewers, off your streets, and out of your homes. Headquartered in Walnut Creek, CSO crews are responsible for cleaning, maintaining, and in an emergency, repairing, rehabilitating, or replacing sewer lines. And CSO has been so successful at that job that the number of sewer spills over the past year is one of the lowest since the district was established in 1946. At the beginning of each month, specific neighborhoods are scheduled for cleaning. Depending on the history and condition of a particular section of sewer line, cleaning may be scheduled for as often as once every three to six months in problematic lines to as infrequently as once every five years. Determining what schedule may be required is helped greatly by our televising program that examines the entire sewer system, all 1,500 miles of it, televised by robotic cameras on an average of once every eight years. Sewer lines that must be cleaned more frequently may have a history of blockages caused by roots, fats, oil, and grease, known as fog, and lately, the so-called flushable wipes. Or, a problem has been noted and recorded by a remote robotic camera. Each cleaning crew has a defined amount of footage to be cleaned that month. Monthly cleaning totals usually run between 350,000 and 400,000 feet. That's 66 to 75 miles each month. A hydro crew may start first for standard cleaning. Generally, a manhole is opened and a high pressure hose is lowered into the sewer. A variety of different heads can be attached to the end of the hose, depending on whether it's heavy grease or debris that must be dislodged and pushed down the sewer line. Heavier material can be vacuumed out by our vacuum truck further down the line. In instances when roots have grown thick or heavy in a sewer line, a rotting truck and its crew is called upon. A strong flexible cable can be fitted with a number of different cutting tools that rotate at high speeds is inserted down a manhole or into a cleanout. Roots are cut away and flushed down the sewer lines. In instances where a root ball has caused a blockage, a crew member may even have to hand rod the sewer line to clear it. Rotting by hand will often be used when clearing lines on easements that run through private property where there may not be room or access for a rotting truck. All cleaning vehicles and crew trucks are maintained and repaired in-house by the district's vehicle shop allowing for quick and specialized service. There are some instances where a problem can't be fixed by cleaning or rotting. Soil settles, pipes age, and sometimes break or totally collapse. And that's when construction begins its work to fix the problem. In some situations, a sewer line may have to be exposed by excavation. Relatively simple if the line is four or five feet below the surface, a bit more difficult when a line is buried 15 to 20 feet below ground. But before any digging starts, our location section will mark the area with chalk or paint, noting the nearby locations of water, gas, and electrical lines based on detailed maps provided by those other utilities and incorporated into our mapping system. When dealing with construction, safety is of paramount importance, from traffic control to excavation bracing. Excavating a line, whether in the street or in an easement, is always disruptive. To avoid disrupting a neighborhood or digging through a backyard, whenever possible, CSO crews will use other less intrusive methods of pipe replacement, also known as trenchless technology. One such method is called pipe bursting, a method adopted by Central San and put into practice in 1987. 
A pneumatically driven pipe burster known as a mole is introduced into the sewer line that needs to be replaced. The mole disintegrates the old pipe, pushing back the surrounding earth and pulls a new pipe into place in one smooth operation. Another trenchless method is called permalining. In instances when a sewer needs to be rehabilitated rather than completely replaced, a resin-soaked tube rolled up like a sock is put into the section to be repaired. Air inflates the tube, unfurling it and swelling it until it fills the section of pipe. The new lining is cured in place and a new pipe within a pipe is ready for use. After a day of cleaning, repair or replacement, crew members enter their reports into our computer database. All this information is used to develop an accurate picture of the entire sewer system where future work may be needed, and when a site may need to be revisited. An often unseen but integral part of CSO operations is the pumping station crew that works to repair and maintain their own operating equipment. The district has a total of 19 pump stations that can push wastewater up hills and rises on its way to the treatment plant in Martinez. Remarkably, of the 1,500 miles of sewer lines in our system, in some of the hilliest parts of the East Bay, only 300 miles actually require the help of a pump station. The remaining 1,200 miles of sewer operate on gravity alone, an amazing engineering feat. The Collection System Operations Department operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. When a real or even potential sewer overflow or backup is phoned in, our emergency response crews are dispatched to get to work alleviating the problem with a 30 to 45 minute maximum response time. All this to protect your health and the environment.